Right, the last video in this series is for us to look at how to get the true shape of the cutting plane. Now in the question, they've asked you to do something very special over here. They are not just asking you to draw the true shape of the cutting plane, they are asking you to draw the true shape of the cutting plane in the direction of, um, of B, okay? In the direction of arrow B. Now on your drawing, you will find that there is an arrow that is done at 90 degrees to this line. Let's just get that. Okay, there should be a, an arrow pointing down in that direction. All right, so there we go. There's an arrow pointing down over here, and they've labeled it B. All right, you'll see that that arrow is at 90 degrees. That means that I need to look at that line at 90 degrees. Now, there are two ways of getting lines to come out at 90 degrees. Um, the one is to use your two set squares. All right, you take a set square, and you're going to line your set square up like that. And you're going to get that all nicely lined up, and you're going to shift this down in order to draw a, an x, y axis. Oh dear, let me just zoom out. Okay, let me just do that again. So you line your set square up with that, and you shift that down uh, very carefully, not moving any of the set squares over here, and you draw an x, y axis over here, and then you're going to take it back along that line in order to get, uh, get this just above that line, and then I can start taking lines down at 90 degrees to all of these points, which is all very good. The problem is that a lot of you start moving these set squares around and then it's a complete mess. Um, that is the more traditional way of doing it. For a drawing like this, people, I think for the concept I'd like to get across to you is that we need to look at that at 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that you get some masking tape and you take your sheet off the board. Right, here's the trick. Take your ruler, place it down so that you can get it lined up on that cutting plane over there. All right, if that's lined up on the cutting plane, you can now take some masking tape, tape your drawing down nice and securely. And what can, what can I do now? Well, I can draw in an X, Y axis very, very easily. There's my X, Y axis. Label it X and label it Y. And now I can drop lines at 90 degrees to the cutting plane. If I've got lines coming off exactly at 90 degrees, well, I'll be looking at that cutting plane at 90 degrees. I'm just going to do these in color. I think it just helps you guys to see it better. There we go. There's my cutting plane. All right, I'm taking red lines off the cutting plane. Um, I'm going to transfer the points for the cutting plane. Right, let's go over here. And A, there's distance A. Find where A is, travel down that line to the X, Y axis, place it off there, and mark it as A. Go to B, distance from X, Y axis to B. Find B, come down over here, knock it in there, and label it as B. Same story with C, find C, come down over here, place it down there, and we will have C. Go to D, find D, go down to the X, Y axis over here, mark it off as D. Note the distance. From this x, y axis is the same as the distance from this x, y axis over here. Right, there is E. Right, so as soon as I've done that, I know that I can see my cutting plane in my view, so I'm going to quickly draw those lines in between these things over here. There we go. There we go. And 
go. If you remember from the last video, I said that if I've got point views over here, I will have lines going parallel on this view. Um, so what can I do now? I'm going to take lines from what part of this can I see? Well, I'm just going to use my little eagle again. Looking at, down at 90 degrees to that, I'm taking this part away because I can see that cutting plane. The part that I'm going to be able to see behind the cutting plane is this part 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I need to transfer those points down. Let's take those points down. I'm going to use this blue over here from 2 coming down. From 1 and 3 coming down. From 4 and 5 coming down. Right. What do I have? Well, can I see this line over here between 2 and B? Absolutely. My eagle is able to pick that. Okay, so I can take this 2 down and I know that 2 and B are a point view over there. Therefore, I've got a line that I can draw out parallel from B to get my point 2. A and 1 are linked up. So let's go to there's A, there's A, there's 1. I can draw a line going between A and 1. C and 3. C and 3 is a point view over there. Therefore, C and 3 must be a point view over here. So I can label that as 3. Oops. Label that as 3. Label that as 1. The last two points that I'm going to need are the points 4 and 5. Now, looking over here, you will see that the eagle has something in front of it. So 4 and 5 uh, are going to be down at the bottom in hidden detail. Um, hidden detail line going between your E, let's see, E and 5. E going to 5 over here as hidden detail. D going to 4 as hidden detail. And from that, I think you can work out that this must be an edge going between 3 and 2. And this is an edge going between 2 and 1, which means that I've got a hidden detail line going down from 3 to 4 over here. A hidden detail line going between 4 and 5 over here. And a hidden detail line going between... 1 and 5 over here. Right, once you've done that, let's do the hatching and this drawing is then complete. Just hatching the cutting plane. Right. For a few extra marks, people, you should always go back and just label these views. Uh, let's just put that over there. Draw some lines in over here, down at the bottom. And you can say over here, true shape. T R shape S H A P E there we go true shape um, you could also label that as the right view and sectional left view right and sectional top view you could write those those labels in and that will be brilliant cool